So welcome everyone uh, to this evening's Bible and Beer. This is the Bible and Beer for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Uh, Bible and Beer is uh, a tradition that we've been doing with our Ignite's Youth and Young Adult Ministry, uh, not so much with the youth, but with the young adults, where we've gathered on a monthly basis to reflect on the scriptures um, of the week and then uh, you know, to, to join in um, a beer as well. So uh, we're glad that so many of you are joining us this evening, especially because we're beginning this season of Advent. And for many of us who are on the screen right now, we're going through our little lockdowns uh, during the COVID-19. So this is a special, especially important for us to continue to connect and to be together in this you know, crazy but difficult time. Um, but nonetheless, we are in this Advent season together. And I think it's important for us, just like when we began COVID, to be able to get together on a regular basis. So uh, we are getting together for all the weeks of Advent, which does coincide in the Toronto area with our 28 day lockdown. So it's good to be together and since we are unable to celebrate Eucharist together in this Advent season. This is still an opportunity for us to, to grow, to be connected, and to be mindful of how we're called to be um, the people of God, continue to be church in the different ways that we're called to do in this Advent season. So we're going to do a little quiz. What you're going to see is... Um, you're going to see a few slides and on your phone, it's going to give you a chance to enter things like phrases, words, guessing, and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is the, the theme of this week for the first week of Advent is to stay awake. So on your screen, it shows the question, Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means, now, you pick one and hit submit. Is it adventure? Is it coming? Is it waiting? So you see on the screen after you have voted. Okay, the votes are coming in. Ten people have submitted. Thirteen people have submitted. Anyone else? We're waiting on one more person. Five, three. Okay, awesome. So you are right. The word is coming. Adventus means coming. So <laughs> Advent, it's about the coming of Jesus. And ready for the next question? Hit refresh on your phone or go to the next slide and then you will be able to see everything that there is. Who announced to Mary that she was chosen to be Jesus's mother? Was it Michael? Was it Raphael? Was it Gabriel? This is kind of an easy one. I don't know why you guys are answering wrong, but this was an easy one. Just joking. <laughs> All right, 11 of you have said Gabriel. The an correct answer is Gabriel. Oh, 12 of you, 13. All right, awesome. Next question. Who was the Roman emperor who decreed a census should be taken? Now you probably can't see it as well here. Was it Caesar, Julius Caesar, Caesar Augustus, or was it Caesar Saladus? <laughs> you like that? Caesar Saladus? Yeah. <laughs> Caesar Saladus. All right, ten, 10 people. 12 people, 14. Okay, everybody submitted. The correct answer is Caesar Augustus. Oh, we hear it loops. <laughs> we hear in Luke's gospel at, uh, that, that the emperor Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken. And that's why Joseph uh, went with Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem, because he was of the line of David. Next question. 
What do the candles on the Advent wreath symbolize? Is it Christ, the light of the world, the passage of time, or warming the chill of winter? And two more, anyone? I have to say this was a tough one, even when I was preparing this, because I came across the question and the answer, and I, I got the answer wrong. I thought the passage of time made sense because you light one candle each week. But they're saying, but the, the rationale on the answer was Christ, the light of the world that the increasing of the light coming among us. So that's where the, but it does in a sense, uh, note the passage of time as we move further into Advent. Okay, Emmanuel means savior, God with us, God and man. This comes right out of the um, book of the prophet Isaiah, that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she will name him Emmanuel, meaning, do you see our last one go? God with us. So that's the right answer, God with us. Why is the third candle of the Advent wreath rose or pink color because rose is the traditional color of the number three it is the color of flowers or it is the symbol of joy reflecting the day's antiphon these are a little too easy anyone else casting their votes All right, you are all correct because it's the symbol of joy and we light that candle on the third Sunday of Advent. Okay, now what you're gonna see on your phone, we're gonna take a few moments to create a word cloud. When you think of Advent, what are the words that come to mind? So on your screen, it's going to show a place to write a phrase or a word, and you can do three of them, three phrases, and they will appear on the screen like they are starting to do now. So when you think of Advent, what words come to your mind? So we've got the word coming, we've got silence, we've got Christmas, nativity, winter, waiting, joy, prepare for Christ, hope, Jesus, wreath, winter, I see garlic and stockings. Oh, wait a minute, that was in my house. Alcohol. <laughs> Thank you, Matthias. Fam, not sure what that is. We've got love, candles, birth. Goodwill, we've got uh, lockdown. <laughs> These are all great words. Um, oh, we got more coming in. Celebration, anticipation, charity, Mary, as in M-E-R-R-Y. OK, 
Okay. So I see we've got more people in here. Thank you for joining us and contributing to these words as we begin our, our session. Any other words you want to put in here? So these are the words, you know, you know, right off the top of our head that help us to be mindful of, of this season and the impact that this season does have, what it has made on us in the past. So as we come to this night, this week, this opportunity to begin this new season, we are mindful of uh, the mystery, but also of the joy and anticipation that this season is about. So I'm just going to move on to the next slide. Kevin, not sure what that is. Okay. How have you marked Advent in the past? So you're going to see on your phone some options. You can mark down which one you have done before. You can put as many. One option, made an Advent wreath. Have you ever made an Advent wreath? Created a Jesse tree. Have you prayed the O antiphons? Have you ever followed a daily reflection book? Have you ate chocolate from an Advent calendar? And have you done a charitable action? A lot of these words reflect the things that you did in the past exercise. So how have you marked Advent in the past? I guess we're all guilty of the eating the chocolate from an advent calendar, or most of us are guilty of doing that. Many of us have done the traditional elements of making a wreath, reading a, a daily reflection uh, book, perhaps in, in the advent season. You know, whether it's one of these types of books or something that reflects very much on advent and Christmas. You know, whatever it takes to be able to uh, reflect and also do a charitable act. That's very important because we know that uh, we are mindful of Christ's presence among us and how that calls us into action. Okay, well, thank you for your, your input there. Uh, Jesse Tree and Praying the O Antiphons. Jesse Tree is, we hear uh, often in the Advent season, the, the from from the stump of Jesse will come the tree and on there, like a family tree, uh, the son of David will be born, the Emmanuel will be born. So from the root of Jesse, and we hear uh, in Matthew's gospel, the lineage of Jesus very much played out. So that's called the from the root of Jesse. Um, often it's a popular craft with children uh, and they add to it just like an Advent calendar. They add each day a different symbol. Uh, the O antiphons, if you've, you know, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and then the different, um, if you ever notice in the hymn book, it has different days when you pray the different verses or you sing the different verses. And that has to do with the O, the O antiphons, um, very much tied into that prayer as well. Now, here's another uh, tree to do, another word cloud. What do you need most in this season of Advent? What do you, you, what do you need most in this season of Advent? So again, enter a word or a phrase or what do you most need? in this season of Advent.
So we have words like, we need time, we need hope, we need grace, we need peace, we need healing, we need joy, we need friends and family. For many of us, we may not see them. We need renewal, silence. We need light out of the darkness. Any other words that you want to share? Thank you for that. I just wanted to let those words percolate in your imagination and in your sharing. So just look at those words for a moment and maybe there are words there that you didn't think of, some words that um, you yourself need in this time. And just rest with those words just for a moment before we continue. As we begin this, our reflection on our readings tonight, we light our wreath, mindful of Christ's presence among us in this beginning of this first week of Advent. I'm going to ask if someone would read our first reading from Isaiah. Any volunteers? Okay. O oh Lord, our Father, our Redeemer from old, of old, is your name. Why, O oh Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our heart so that we do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that are your heritage. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. When you did awesome deeds, that we did not expect. You came down, <laughs> sorry about that. When you came down, the mountains quaked at your, at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. Uh, one, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our right, righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all, fade, we all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on, our name, on your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. So we take a moment to pause and allow the words that we heard from the prophet to touch our hearts. Perhaps there's a word or a phrase that strikes you. Just stay with that word or that phrase, especially as it reflects this beginning of our Advent season. This is a reading from Mark's gospel, Mark 13, verse 33 to 37. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, 
and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. So it's time to wait. Nine months ago, we were told in our season of Lent to sit back and to wait. To wait for the storms of COVID to brush by. And here we are, nine months later. We're still waiting. Now we're waiting for a cure. We're waiting for a vaccine. Waiting for a time when the world will just release a, a sigh of relief that this crazy, difficult, and deadly time would pass. We thought that we had finished with the summer. Gee, it wasn't that bad. Numbers were down. Life was somewhat back to normal. Even as the leaves, they fell from the trees, we wondered if a second wave would actually truly dominate our everyday life. And here we are, once again, locked down in our homes, in our cities. And of course, if you're joining us from outside uh, greater, the greater Toronto area, like some of you are, you may also be experiencing your own level of restrictions, even if you're not clearly in lockdown, like many of us. But yet it's pretty drastic out there for so many people, and even for us as this darkness which has taken over our world reflects the darkness that we often experience within. On Sunday, this past Sunday, I was saying to a couple of you, uh, Lucio from Street Patrol, uh, he and I went for a drive around the area in preparation to start our winter Street Patrol this coming weekend. It was snowy, it was wet, it was a miserable evening. And we were shocked because we, we got to Moss Park and we saw 50 tents. Drove over to Trinity Bellwoods and there was about 50 tents. People are out in the cold, many of whom often used to come here to St. Pat's and other places in the winter for the Out of the Cold program. But we had to close this year due to COVID. But that's not stopping our winter street patrol, as many of you know. And uh, we'll talk about that later on with some announcements. But here we are, we're in lockdown, waiting again, waiting, waiting. It's how fitting that we begin this advent in this time of waiting. Again, whether we are in lockdown or just some, um, some of the basic restrictions, we're all waiting. You know, life is filled with waiting, and almost nothing worthwhile in life comes quickly. We wait for all the important things in life. We begin life by waiting for our birth. We await a child's first words, their first steps. We wait for the beginning of school. And then we can't wait till we're out of school. We wait for the perfect job. Then we wait to retire. We wait, we wait, and we wait. You might remember that in Lent, as we began this COVID this COVID journey, we were very much attuned to the liturgical season, the sacrifice, the, the, the time of desert. And here we are 
COVID is still a reality of that experience of desert, that prevailing reality of our times. And Advent and the season of waiting is this promise that we wait to be fulfilled. It's an ever-present reality that just keeps defining our existence every day. The prophet Isaiah summoned a nation that was in exile, reaching up to heavens, waiting for the heavens to rip open, for God to make good on that promise. Well, their darkness is our darkness out there, but also in here. We hear, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Well, get down here, God. Make a difference. Help us. Cure us. Heal us. Because we need you now. We need our Redeemer to come and act. Sure, it's more than just a healing. It's about a, a change of heart to change our minds, to know that we belong to God and that we are like clay being worked in the hands of the Master. For Isaiah, it was a time for the people to be renewed, to be set free to know that they belonged to God and were beloved. Like clay, they were fashioned. Like clay, they were being formed. And like clay, they would need to know the fire. The fire of transformation, the fire of being tested. But they would have to wait for all of that to come to pass. We hear in our gospel today, for this Sunday, to beware, to keep alert, to keep awake. If we are sleeping when the master comes, who knows what might happen? Who knows what the master might do? But we wait in patience. We, we wait with patience. We wait with hope, we wait with joy, we wait with love. Advent is a time of waiting. Waiting for Christmas, waiting for this virus to come to an end, waiting for hope and healing to prevail waiting for life to return and to be better than normal. But in all of that, though, we're waiting for God to make good on the promise, for God to visit the people so that we know we are loved. That's what we celebrate each year. That's what we celebrate and come to each year as we prepare to celebrate the birth of God, the birth of Jesus, that God was making good on the promise because God was coming to visit the people so they would know they were loved. So what are you going to do to wait in these 26 more days in lockdown? Maybe it isn't to go shopping. Maybe it isn't to do this or that and then blame our lack of charity or our lack of time praying on all the things that you had to do to get ready. We don't have these distractions all of a sudden. So as much as COVID is a curse, this time is a gift. It's a byproduct that is a gift. So let's not waste time. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Just a very simple message for the beginning of Advent. 
a simple message that leads us into some time of reflection and discussion. So we're going to break up into small groups. And I'm just going to On the handout that you would have received, you would have received these questions. What is your, I might have reversed it on the sheet though. What is your waiting for? Or what are you waiting for? Think of the difference in the question. What is your waiting? For. And what are you waiting for? Secondly, how is this waiting in restriction and or lockdown? How is it an opportunity for grace in your life? And in what ways do you view Advent differently this year? So we're going to break up into small groups and I will, uh, as usual, come around and we'll join the conversation in a little bit. And um, we will take about 20, 25 minutes. So maybe about 10 after eight, we will come back together um, just to share some reflection and to do one more mentee exercise as we wrap up.